welcome to our online All Saints Day worship. Today we're joined by Church Warden Vicky and our special guest preacher is Sue Lyon. She's a very experienced and very welcome preacher. Thank you, Sue, for joining us. Now, before we begin our online worship, let us still our minds and open our hearts to God's word. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Rejoice, people of God, praise the Lord. Let us keep the feast in honour of all God's saints, in whose victory the angels rejoice and glorify the Son of God. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, <clears throat> O Lord. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We'll now hear the sermon from Sue. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. I read both readings for today and pondered which one I should base my thoughts on. And I was actually drawn to John. So if John had a social media footprint, this week's status update would read, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. Now, these words of encouragement written to a community that is troubled by a schism. 
whatever were the details of the split, and since we have a response by only one side, we have to read between the lines and in mirror image to figure it out. The disagreement has been serious enough that some folks have packed up and left the church. Anyone who has experienced the trauma of a congregational or denominational split can imagine how devastating this development would have been for parties on both sides of the divide. And yet, do we not feel some affiliation to this dilemma? We here find ourselves sitting in a church with distance between ourselves. We are unable to spend time together over a cup of coffee or talk or discuss what could be described as difficult times. We, as a church family, are spread apart with no one at the head to turn to. Chris is now hopefully settled into his new parish and our two lovely curates, who both so different, brought so much to our lives, have now moved on. And here we are, wondering what is going to happen next. Not able to really plan anything with so much uncertainty ahead of us all. I'm sure that we each have our own views on what we would like the future of our own church to be like. Some will want nothing to change. Keep the same structure to the services. Sing the same hymns. That is, of course, when we can. But others will see this as an opportunity to change the services. To bring perhaps more modern songs be really radical, have guitars and drums. And all of this will bring discord, we know that. But we are a church family whose core aim is to bring love and peace to all to live in harmony. Mm, now, how realistic is that thought? So going back to our reading, this community was unable to remain in fellowship due to significant differences in their beliefs about Jesus. Which is something that we at the heart of all that we do and say is not and will not be a significant problem, I hope. At the heart of the matter, according to the author, is that the people who have left are denying that Jesus is the Christ. That is, as it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. And that he is the incarnate son of God. They still understand themselves to be followers of Jesus, but what they believe and confess about him differs for those who remain. One of the primary aims of John is to persuade the re remaining community members that they have a good reason to hold onto their confession because they have experienced its truth in their very existence as a community. Now John emphasizes this view in the introductory verse. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Now that is the opening verse of chapter 1 from 1 John. Faith, according to this writing, is not simply a matter of con uh, cognitive assertion. It is the testimony of the real life, embodied experience that has been given to them by God. The glue that holds the church together is God's love, which has bound them into one family as children of God. Those who have chosen to depart claim fellowship with Jesus, and they also claim that they have no sin. Claims that John refutes. 
the specific details of their sin are not spelled out. That is, there is not an enumerated list, list of behaviours or actions, except that they chose to leave the group. They went out from us, as written in chapter 2. From the perspective of 1 John, their departure violates the identity of the community as those who love one another. Although they claim to have the light of Christ, their actions do not show it. They hate brother or sister, as it says in chapter 2, verse 9. In other words, the opponents talk the talk, but they do not walk the walk. In contrast, John urges the community to remain, to abide in Christ by walking just as he walked. At issue then is the importance of living in community in such a way that it reflects their walk with Jesus. C, perhaps better translated, look at, the first words of the passage suggests that the love given by God is something that people can actually see. It is not a fuzzy feel-good sensation, but a concrete and visible reality that has already been bestowed on the community that follows Christ. Readers of the Gospel of John would readily hear the echoes from its prologue. But to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Here in 1 John, the status of God's children is not simply a sign of the past or a future eschatological hope, but a present reality, for that is what we are. Lest we miss the point, the author repeats it, along with another reminder of the believer's beloved status. Beloved, we are God's children now. This is good news indeed. In the midst of separation and disagreement, it is not uncommon for a community or individuals within it to lose confidence in its ability to move faithfully into an unknown future. It is too easy to get bogged down in questions of what if and fears about what might be. Preachers might point out to the congregation what it looks like in their context to be God's children now, in their particular place and time. How is the church community already manifesting God's love in its identity, in its actions, in the ways it is known to the community around it? On this day of all saints, what can the congregation learn from the testimony of the saints of this place who have walked before them? How did these local ancestors of the faith live into their identity as children of God. The church need not gaze wistfully for some day to come in order to possess the fullness of its identity. There is no need to wait until there are more members or more resources or more of whatever we might believe is necessary to be good or faithful or missional church. Like the readers of 1 John, perhaps the people gathered for worship in today's churches could benefit from an occasional reminder that God has already bestowed upon them the thing that is most important for being the people they are called to be. They are children of God already, today, now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sue.
We will now say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Dorina will lead us in our prayers of intercession now. United in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Roger, our Bishop, and all your ministers of your church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets into a holy temple in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your holy and life-giving spirit, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ from glory to glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above, that they may find Christ's way of freedom and life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy all who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Touch and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured by pain, that raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may be tuned turned to eternal joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember in your mercy all those gone before us who have been well-pleasing to you from eternity. Preserve in your faith your servants on earth. Guide us to your kingdom and grant us your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten the day when many will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we give you thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace may we, like them, be made perfect in your love. And we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We finish our online worship today with the blessing. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. Following God's saints in the ways of holiness and truth, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>